There is an urgency today, an urgency to form Catholic Christians so that they will both know God and love God, because by knowing him, you know, as you come to know him, you fall in love with him. This is something, you know, if the first commandment, Jesus said, is to love the Lord our God with our whole heart, mind, and strength. Now, can you imagine if you're to love someone that way, if you didn't want to know him? That would be absurd. And so, in wanting to love God, we have to want to know him. And I tell you, as you come to know him more deeply, you will come to love him more deeply. And then you will want to serve him. And then, as the old catechism used to say, we will be happy with him in heaven for all eternity. That's probably the first thing I ever read in the Baltimore Catechism, the meaning of human life. To know God, to love God, to serve God, that we might be happy with him in heaven for all eternity. My dear friends, nothing has changed. That's still the meaning of human life. And in an age which seems to have forgotten what life is all about, that's what it's all about. John Paul II, the great Pope of our times, has taught constantly that this catechism flowed right out of the Second Vatican Council, and it really did. If you take the Holy Father's Apostolic Constitution, Fidei Depositum, you look right in the, t in the title. If you would take a catechism and look right at the first page, what you would see is on the publication of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, prepared following the Second Vatican Council. It was on the 20th anniversary of the closing of Vatican II. This is a quote. The purpose, the purpose of this assembly, said the Holy Father, was to celebrate the graces and spiritual fruits of Vatican II, to study its teaching in greater depth in order that all the Christian faithful might better adhere to it and to promote knowledge and application of it. On that occasion, many of the fathers of this extraordinary synod expressed a desire to have a catechism or a compendium of all Christian doctrine. There had been a lot of confusion, voices that were crying out one against the other, contradictory voices, conflicting voices, and people were becoming confused, and the bishops knew it. And so they expressed a desire to have a definitive source book, one place you could look to see what the church basically teaches in faith and morals. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is the result of extensive collaboration. All the bishops in the world were consulted in 1986, John Paul II entrusted the task of drafting a catechism to a panel of 12 cardinals and bishops. That was chaired by Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. He's the prefect of the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith and a great theologian. An editorial committee of seven diocesan bishops who are experts in theology and catechetics was chosen to edit. Then there were nine successive drafts of the catechism, each one including interventions and recommendations that had been made by the bishops, the bishops consultors, theologians, catechists, ecclesiology, um, um, departments of theology in the church, it was a work of tremendous collaboration. Now, anyone who would ever try to tell you that this is something the Pope imposed on us is not in touch with reality. All the world's bishops were consulted on this. Every one of them had input. All the ecclesiastical faculties of theology, experts on catechesis and theology. You know, interestingly enough, when I was preparing to be ordained a deacon. I went on retreat. You, when you're going to be ordained, you have to go on a, a retreat before ordination, whether be ordained as a deacon or priest. And so I went on my retreat to a monastery in Petersham, Massachusetts. And as I moved in 
to my room, uh, I noticed there was a priest moving into the room next to me. He was also a, a visitor, a retreatant. And I met him, and his name is Monsignor Michael Wren. He is the principal religious education expert for Cardinal O'Connor of the Archdiocese of New York. Monsignor Wren was there to study the first draft of the catechism, the first one. He gave me a copy, and he said, I know you're not a theologian, but you're a seminarian and you're a, a Catholic layman. Would you review this? And he gave me a red pencil, and he said, and would you put in there what you think, just as an average Catholic, what, what you think it lacks and what you think it needs? Now, that was a rather extraordinary grace. That was the first time I ever came in contact with the catechism, the first draft. Remember, there were nine of them in succession. So I saw the first one, and I read it very prayerfully and meditatively over that week of my pre-diaconate ordination retreat. And I talked with Monsignor Michael Wren many times during that week. And then time went on, and I went away for my higher studies in Europe, and I saw some of those successive drafts. I saw the finished product very quickly in French, then in Spanish, and I worked with it from the very beginning. And so I had a, a singular blessing, I think, to have been able to see it right from the beginning. I can tell you it is a magnificent blessing for the church of our times. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit working through the universal church. All the bishops, all the experts had something to say. All of their interventions, all of their suggestions were taken into account. It was drafted and redrafted and redrafted. And then under the expert, and I would say inspired guidance of Bishop Christoph Schönborn, the finished product came about, a grace and a blessing for our time. Now the doctrinal value of the text. The Holy Father in that same document that opens the Catechism, the Deposit of Faith, tells us straightforwardly what the value of the text of the Catechism is. This is a quote. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which I approved June 25th last, that was 1991, and the publication of which I today order by virtue of my apostolic authority is a statement of the Church's faith and of Catholic doctrine attested to and illumined by sacred scripture, the apostolic tradition, and the Church's magisterium. I declare it to be a sure norm for teaching the faith and thus a valid and legitimate in instrument for ecclesial communion. I declare it to be a sure norm for teaching the faith. That's what the catechism is. It is a sure norm for teaching the faith. And it was so I remember kneeling uh, as his body lay in state in St. Peter's. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to go. And I remember the night before the funeral, Neil, and that was, that's another story, how I got right next to his body. Um, almost no one could get in that close. Uh, I got into St. Peter's uh, with uh, one of our young priests uh, in the Society of Our Lady. He got, a, he got, he, he had a special pass. He was a member of the, uh, the priests in the, um, by Carriot of Rome, so he had a special pass, and we got in a back door of St. Peter's, and we got up pretty close, and we prayed, and um, three Swiss guards came up to me. Now, there were Swiss guards at that event dressed three different ways. They were three different kinds. Some of them were undercover. They were dressed like the FBI would be dressed, and you didn't know they were the Swiss guards. Uh, but then you had the Swiss guards in the full regalia, um, and they, that it was, those were the ones that came up to me. And one of them said in English, follow us. Oh no, first they saluted. First they saluted, and then they said, follow us. They led me right through the crowd, right up to where the Holy Father's body lay in state, and there was a, uh, a kneeler there. 
I knelt down. They stood at attention next to me. Now I'm alone. It's just me and them. So I prayed, got up. They escorted me back through the crowd, saluted, and left. They left me standing there wondering what had just happened. I had no clue what that was all about. I have more connections in Las Vegas than I do at the Vatican. So I had no idea what that was about. A couple minutes later, there was a, um, one of the ushers dressed in a tuxedo. An Italian uh, gentleman uh, said to me, uh, hey, I know who you are. I said, you do? He said, yeah, we have, uh, we have television in Italy, you know. He said, that was pretty good what the Cardinals just did for you. I said, Cardinals? He said, yeah. The two German Cardinals. You know, he was still a Cardinal then. Right. Cardinal Ratzinger and Cardinal Schoenborn. I said, what do you mean? What did they do? The Swiss guards. They sent the Swiss guard to escort you up to the Holy Father's body as an honor because of the catechism series that has gone all over the world. They know who you are. I didn't know. I, had no, I never would have known what had happened. No one told me. I never would have known if that man hadn't seen it and understood it. And so I kind of, I kind of marveled. I really marveled at that.